think for most of us, we've always had that one dream fish that we've been chasing from the day we really started getting into spearfishing. For me, it was always a red emperor, especially that one real trophy size fish. On this trip, I was lucky enough to come across that fish that, at this point in time, felt nearly impossible to find. We were also lucky enough to shoot a few other really great fish and overall just have two really incredible days out at the reef. We started the day off in some shallower ground to what we'd normally dive, just hoping to see if there would be a change of the kind of fish that we'd see, if there'd be anything worth shooting, and there didn't really seem to be too much. I did go have a shot at that Robinson sea brim, but I did end up missing. On the next dive, we pushed out to some deeper water and straight away came across some better ground and some better fish as well. On this dive, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to shoot this tusky, and I was a bit hesitant at first, and then sort of decided, ah, oh, I'll give it a shot. And I thought I'd placed a nice shot into him, but somehow the spear ended up coming out, and I ended up losing the fish. Although I don't like showing clips where injured fish sort of get away, I think it's important to sometimes just show when scenarios like that do happen, because you can't always prevent it, and in times like that, my flopper didn't engage and it ended up losing me the fish. So it's always important to double check your flopper and luckily I had the right tools on the boat to fix that up for the rest of the day so that didn't end up happening again. I've thrown this clip in as well of Cameron diving on a relatively small isolated bit of structure that you find all in that sort of sandy bottom where your good chance of finding crayfish and even those reds and tuskies can hang off little bombies like that. Cameron made a perfect example of that kind of structure coming to use on this dive where he shoots this nice tusky that he's spotted darting around on the sand and they sort of go in and between those bommies but if you really look at the structure that he's on there isn't much there at all and it's that kind of stuff that these kind of fish definitely seem to like a lot more. On Cameron's next dive he spots another perfect little bommie, the exact kind of structure that you're looking for especially for those reds and um, I'm pretty sure this was actually the same one that I shot my first red of the trip on and it was unfortunate for Cameron because he took the first dive down saw a nice tusky swim in and decided to go for that and very often that commotion is what brings those red emperor in to that kind of area and that's exactly what happened here he shot his tusky and then right after a nice red emperor swam in As it got to that later end of the day, we found a patch of bombies which were producing lots and lots of really good fish. They were very healthy, lots of bait and sweet lips and stuff were getting around. I often use them as a good sign that there will be reds and other mangrove jack kind of species around. On this specific bommie, there was pretty much every single species of fish I could think of nearly all on the one spot. There were no real big reds or big mangrove jack, but they were all getting around, and even a small job fish was swimming in and out of the bommie, which was really cool to see considering how shallow we were. They're generally a lot deeper, and even on this bommie, there was a really big Queensland groper. I didn't get him on video, but it was a really good sign that there was definitely something nearby that all these fish had to be here for. The next two bommies ended up being what I'd been looking for this entire time. The first one had a smaller red which was around 61 centimeters, and it was the dive right after this one where I found my dream fish.
my dream fish speared in 12 meters of water on a bommy that I would have never picked would have had that fish on it. Everything came together perfectly for me. It took me multiple dives before I got this fish in close enough for a shot. I had seen him on my previous dive and knew that he was around. It actually was a slight challenge compared to other Red Emperor to bring him in close, which almost made it even more special. Not long after, we came across another Red Emperor and put our friends straight onto it. And this actually was his second time ever spearfishing the reef and he was so stoked to land his first red. One of the biggest takeaways from this trip is that I previously thought there was a certain kind of bommie to look for when finding red emperors. On this trip, it proved that it almost didn't really matter what the bommie looked like and it was sort of just a matter of luck that the red was there at the time that we came to that bommie. It's hard to say that if I came a week or two later, if that same fish would have been in that same spot, or even if we had gone there earlier in the day, he may have been in a completely different spot on the reef. With everyone happy about the fish that we landed, we decided to go up into the shallows and look for a few crayfish for the last few hours of the day. The first crayfish I found ended up being a female and also had eggs on it. Here in Queensland, we're not allowed to keep females that are bearing eggs and you have to put them back. All right guys, that pretty much sums out two awesome days on the reef. PB, Red Emperor, many crays, and uh, Ella, Cameron, and Jacoby. Hello. We all had heaps of fun, and uh, we're um, gonna see you guys on the next trip, and peace out.